Okay, so I'm kind of continuing on with the uh, video I did a couple of weeks ago where I kind of went over how I use the, the one hour time frame. So with this trade from uh, Monday morning, which was the 14th, you can kind of see that I've marked out um, small horizontal black lines. Now, what those are is exactly what I was talking about in that one hour video. So uh, I'm kind of diving into the one hour time frame and I'm marking up in the in the zones that I've created for the day, which are based around the daily time frame, um, where the kind of main swing points are on that one hour time frame. The reason I do that is it gives me kind of a, a, a confluence to getting into the trade. It's telling me that okay, so this is the zone that I've marked up on the daily time frame. It's good on the daily time frame, and this is the kind of confirmation now on the one hour time frame. Um, so I don't usually um, or don't always mark up the black lines. This is just f uh, for the videos, basically. So what you can see is the market drops down into it. I'm looking at the zone. I was already looking at the market for a potential bullish bounce there. It comes straight down. It tests just around about those black lines. And then we get the, uh, the piercing pattern. So after I'm seeing that, I already know just by looking at the screen, okay, it's testing into that kind of one hour confirmation area. I've already got the analysis from the higher time frame. This is potentially a bounce point. Then I'm looking on the, the five minute time frame for the first potential area of resistance. And it's the, the little swing point. Um, so what I'm looking at there is um, I'm kind of weighing up how confident am I that this market is going to bounce from here? Um, am I confident enough to risk it hitting into an area where the bears would step in if it was going to continue on the bearish, or do I want to be more cautious? For this one, I did want to be a little bit cautious. Um, so if we had just rejected from there and came back down, I would have um, just came out of the trade at break even. But as it turned out, pretty easy. Um, it bounced up into just around about the zone up above. I was looking for the zone up above as the profit target, um, and just before it got there, I came out of the trade. Why? Because... First of all, it's a potential resistance zone. And secondly, you can see another little black line up there. So if it is going to start rejecting, it's going to be around about that area is my opinion. So I want to get out of the trade and I close it out for around about £400 of profit, which is, you know, really good, really easy trade. So that's kind of the power of support and resistance. People always ask me, you know, like, what's the, you know, you know what's, What's the secret to trading? What what should I learn when I'm trading? What is there an indicator that I use always? That's why I always get asked. What's the best indicator? The best indicator is you learning support and resistance. If you're going to be a price action trader, it's everything else is kind of here, and then support and resistance is way way up here in um, in terms of importance. It's, it can be very very powerful. So what I did also was from the Tuesday. I kind of caught um, a little bit of a blind position that I took. So with this one, what you can see on the zone is, and I should point this out, when it comes to blinds, um, I don't suggest people just jump into taking blind positions because you can get kind of steamrollered very, very quickly. Um, it's a lot more likely you're going to have emotional trading. Um, you're going to, you know, the trading psychology is going to take over and you're going to make lots of mistakes. I only do blind trades very, very rarely. It just so happened that this one set up perfectly on a Tuesday, so I could add it into this video. Um, so this is pre-market. Um, what you can see with this zone is there's lots of black horizontal lines, meaning that there's lots of one-hour kind of um, confirmations in there. I was already looking at this market as um, potentially still bullish for another bullish bounce. So coming into this, I was already kind of ex looking for and expecting some sort of a bullish bounce. I'm then looking at, well, first of all, you can see the entry point. The The entry was actually the black line underneath, but that's um, the entry point is including the spread, the pre-market spread, which is which is larger. Um, I'd gone on to the one hour, I looked at it, I'd said, okay, if it does drop back into this level, we're testing at the close price from the previous day. We've got the MA200. Uh, I'm looking at the market as being bullish. I'm looking at this zone as being a very good area for it to bounce from, and I've got lots of one hour confirmation. Um, so I was using that as kind of my confirmation to get into the trade as the as the entry. And what you can see is we do get a nice bounce. Uh, we're on about £340 on the trade. Um, now, as I've mentioned, they're pretty rare, but the point of sort of turning on and recording that trade um, is because I wanted to kind of show that 
if you put a lot of focus onto your support and resistance, and if you kind of develop it over time, it you know it, it does take time to learn support and resistance well. I would say, um, if you do put the time in, you can get um, really accurate on the markets. Now, obviously, you're still going to have losses, you're still going to have bad days, whatever, um, but. That is the kind of the area that I always advise people to really, really hone in on and focus on is support and resistance. Because if you become good enough, I know people who they don't even um, use entry candles. They just use support and resistance and blind entries. Now, I'm not confident enough to do that. Um, mainly, I'm confident enough that my levels, but I'm not confident enough in myself. I know my weakness um, would be that if I had a couple of losses, emotionally, I would find it very, very difficult to uh, cope with that and I would start making mistakes. Yeah, if, if you've got weaknesses in trading, the best thing to do is to air them, to bring them forward, to admit them, and then build your trading plan around that. So don't allow that uh, to be a problem that keeps recurring. For me, that is a major weakness, so I only take blinds. Um, if I'm really, really confident in the entry and I only take them maybe a couple times, you know, two, three, maybe four times a month maximum if there's lots and lots of setups in the month. Okay, guys, so that's everything for this week. As always, I hope that was helpful. Hope you're all having a good trading week and a good trading October. Uh, I'm James Orr, and thank you.